Now, also this afternoon, the Taliban has come out and denied any involvement in the missing flight. A spokesman for the Taliban in Afghanistan has said, we do not have any information as it is an external issue. And an unnamed Taliban source in Pakistan has said, we wish we had had the opportunity to hijack such a plane. The, the last sentence there is obviously... Um quite insulting, but at the same time uh, it's an unnamed source. It's not, that's not an official statement by that organisation in any way. Mm -hmm. It's just worth bearing that in mind. To more news now and police in Victoria. We would like to either prove or discount the possibility that the aircraft came south. Now, also this afternoon, the Taliban has come out and denied any involvement in the missing flight. A spokesman for the Taliban in Afghanistan has said, we do not have any information as it is an external issue. And an unnamed Taliban source in Pakistan has said, we wish we had had the opportunity to hijack such a plane. The, the last sentence there is obviously um, quite insulting, but at the same time, uh, it's an unnamed source. It's not, that's not an official statement by that organisation in any way. Mm. It's just worth bearing that in mind. To more news now, and police in Victoria say they've smashed a Middle Eastern crime syndicate wide open after arresting 27 people in a series of... There is obviously um, quite insulting, but at the same time, uh, it's an unnamed source. It's not, that's not an official statement by that organisation in any way. Mm. It's just worth bearing that in mind. To more news now, and police in Victoria say they've smashed a Middle Eastern crime syndicate wide open after arresting 27 people in a series of pre-dawn raids across Melbourne. Thank you. <laughs> All right, back to today's news now, and prosecutors have told a Melbourne court former federal MP Craig Thompson should go to jail for misusing his health services union credit card. Found guilty of 65 dishonesty charges last month, he's now agreed to repay the almost $25,000 he misused. He'll be sentenced next week. And South Australian cricketer Daniel Worrell has been suspended for scratching a picture of a penis into a Melbourne wicket last week. <laughs> the pitch was set to be used in a grand final game. Worrell... In fact, do you know what? Do you know what? Um, we'll publish a list of possible jokes uh, via our Twitter, our Twitter account uh, at the Project TV. I can't believe you can say penis. Oh, we, we, well, we, 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 we can say it once. <laughs> just, yeah. I, I, think, I think maybe Paula may get carried away later on. <laughs> Now that she knows that's the case. Uh, moving on to something else now. And Aussie kids are spending more and more time in... Coming up on the project, they call it the oldest profession in the world. But how much do we really know about the sex industry and the people who work in it? Why not choose a conventional job? I just get bored. I just love it. There's nothing else in this like it. This is the project. And So you think it's a even as a little glance of the flipper, it would still it would still I hurt. I feel like that we hit our enough. quota, our quota of that area tonight. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> We're only halfway through the show. <laughs> Uh, moving on to our feature story tonight, and they experience stigma every day. But what is life really like for Australia's sex workers? It's the most awesome job in the world. Like, why would you not love going to work and making a human being happy? Grace is 26 and runs her own successful business, making $600 an hour. Like most young entrepreneurs, she uses her website and engages with clients on Twitter and Instagram to market her product. Grace's product is her body. She is a sex worker. People often ask me why or how I can have sex with people that I don't like. I'm a sexual health provider. I explain it like being like a doctor. I've seen so many bodies that body is irrelevant. But let's be honest, most girls don't grow up wanting to be sex workers. So how did Grace wind up working at a brothel in her late teens? I was fascinated by sex workers and at the time highly sexual. So I went out, went shopping, brought some tacky clothing and told my mum I was going to a party and I actually walked to the brothel. Still living at home, Grace managed to hide her double life from her parents, but only for a while. Mum found out she noticed an influx of money. She then confronted me and I remember she vomited and my dad cried. I was horrified, yeah. Um, it's not what I wanted for my daughter. And as a parent and what I obviously instilled in her um, was the complete opposite. Grace refused to rethink her new career choice and was kicked out of home. Eight years later, she's now a private operator. Hello, Grace speaking. She claims to have some fairly high-profile clients and has no qualms seeing married men. It's your personal ethics. It's not up to me to take responsibility for your choices as a human being. 
Over time, Lynn has come to accept her daughter's chosen career. I couldn't live a life like that, but I also see her as a, an advocate for what she does. I've grown to have a grudging respect for her. But while Grace appears to love her job, as we all know, there is a dark side to Australia's sex industry. I don't particularly want to be a sex worker. Uh, I would like to go out and get a normal, regular job. This 24-year-old, who we'll call Nadia, has been selling sex on the street since she was just 15. She's now a drug addict, addicted to ice. I definitely would be able to quit the industry if it wasn't for ice. Nadia charges the men who drive by seeking her services as little as $50. She needs twice that to be able to afford her daily drug fix. It's pretty difficult, yeah. It's pretty hard to know that you've got to do that. It's also dangerous. Just last year, Melbourne sex worker Tracy Connolly was brutally murdered near this very spot. Her killer hasn't been found. One client tried to drag me into his car one day a few years ago when I refused to get in. So that was pretty scary. It's estimated street workers account for just 2% of all sex workers. But sadly, they experience a disproportionate amount of violence. One Queensland study found 60% of street-based workers had been sexually assaulted by a client, a much higher rate than other forms of sex work. Sally Tonkin runs the St Kilda Gatehouse, a support centre for street workers. I've been here six years and I haven't met one woman who does want to be working. They're working for a reason. You know, if they have a drug addiction, many are homeless, and so they might just be working to have accommodation for the night. Nadia has dreams of leaving sex work and becoming a carer in the aged care sector. But as this former brothel worker knows, it's a hard industry to escape. I thought it's so shameful. There's, there's nowhere I can ask for help to start with. Genevieve wanted to leave after two years, but ended up staying for eight. She now has nightmares and flashbacks, symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. Some women say that they're happy in the job, but it just destroys you. It's just not natural. You know, having sex with 600 men a year, it's a real abuse and violence against women. Grace acknowledges some women are victims of circumstance, but she insists she's not one of them. She says we need to find a way to protect the vulnerable without taking away her right to choose how she makes a living. Why not choose a conventional job? I just get bored. I just, I just love it. There's nothing else in earth like it. Clearly, every woman's experience is different there, but yeah, I should also say we appreciate those women sharing their stories with us tonight as well. Absolutely, and mm. it, the fact is that it is, uh, it's an industry that people work in, and if nothing else, people should be safe when they go to work, regardless of what their job is. Mm. If you have just joined us, here's a quick recap of today's headlines and police will continue their search of a Queensland property at Jin, Jin near Bundaberg but say they haven't found any human remains. Police have arrested 27 people in a series